Hey, what's going on everybody? I've been trying to figure out this halftone pattern thing for a long time now and I think I finally figured it out. So if you guys would like to follow along, there is a step-by-step -step word instruction on the website. There's also the image that I use from Pexel on the website as well. So get that and then follow the tutorial. It'll make your experience a little bit better. Uh, but with that said, let's get started. Okay, ladies and gents, we're starting off in Illustrator. So once you have your Illustrator open, I'm gonna go ahead and make an eight and a half by 11 page. Now make this to the size of your magazine, but we're gonna create the graphic here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create. Okay, to start off, we're putting in an image of a vector file or a black and white file. And what we're gonna do is just image trace it. Here, I have the image selected. I'm gonna go up to image trace. It should do a pretty good job if it's a black and white image. And I'm going to just go ahead and click expand up here. Once you've done that, make sure you right click, ungroup, and we're gonna go ahead and select the white part of the image and just delete everything. So now you can see I have a vector shape of the head and I can make it into a gradient, which is going to help activate the half tone. Now, one thing to keep in mind for the actual gradient itself is when it's black, it's not going to apply the halftone pattern, meaning it's gonna be a solid uh, where your image is. But once it starts turning a little bit of gray, then it's gonna start making bubbles and circles for the halftone pattern. Knowing that, we're gonna go ahead and create a nice gradient on this image. Uh, we're gonna start by going into the gradient tool and with the shape selected, you can go ahead and just click on the shape and then you can drag out your gradient. So for this particular gradient, what we want here is the left side to not have the halftone effect and the right side to kind of fade away like this cool effect, right? So taking what we know about the black and white and where it applies a halftone and not, we actually want a little bit more of the black on this side. So I'm going to drag the black slider all the way out just to give a full black fill on the left side because we don't want any halftone pattern applied on the left side here. So now that we have a color that we are happy with, I'm going to go ahead and go into effect, go down to pixelate and apply a color halftone. Now, it's important that you guys make the radius a little bit bigger for this one because Illustrator has a little bit of a tough time tracing really, really small pixels. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with a 40. This is just how big the maximum size of your circles and your halftone is, but feel free to play around with this. Going in with 40. So make sure the values here in channels are the same. Otherwise you'll get colors in your halftone, which is not really what we want. So I'm rolling with a 40 and a 45 setup. Going to hit okay. And it's going to do a pretty good job of doing something like this for me. Hey, are you still looking for an Adobe subscription? Like with all the apps in it? Well, if you guys want to support the channel, I have a affiliate link down in the description. And also your boy will be a speaker at Adobe Max 2025. So watch out for that. Anyways, affiliate link down in the description below and let's get back into the video. The next step is to image trace this. So now if I go ahead and go into objects, First, we're going to rasterize it so that it is now in an image. I'm gonna make sure that it's on grayscale and I'm going to make sure the resolution is fairly high. So at 300 uh, PPI, we can leave everything else as is and I'm going to hit okay. Now, this is an image. What we're going to do next is simply hit the image trace button and hit okay to have it give us a nice image trace result here. So I think I was fairly lucky when I did this one, but through my trial and tribulation, there is many ways that this can go wrong. So let me show you guys some troubleshooting tips for this. If it doesn't give you nice circles like it's given me here, a good way to counteract that or try to counteract that is if you go into this image trace panel over here and you bring in the advanced options. So if you check right here, you can go ahead and turn down the path the corner as well as the noise all the way down to the bottom and see if that helps. Usually that does help simplify the path and make things just a little bit easier. If that doesn't help, make sure that the shapes checkbox is turned on so that it makes circles and everything like that. So give that a shot if your image trace didn't give you the results that you actually wanted. All right, so now that I have something like this, I can go ahead and click expand and it'll have all of these different vectors for me. I'm going to right click, ungroup, 
And this part is fairly important. What I'm gonna do is clean up all of the white off the page because we don't want to copy any part that is white on the page. So I'm going to select the big white boundary or the big white portions. We also wanna get rid of all these small guys. What we're going to do is go up here to the select similar object with our white on the page selected. It's going to select all of the different white pieces that exist in this image. And I'm going to just go ahead and hit delete. Now, once that is done, we can go ahead and just select everything here and transfer into InDesign. So before we copy this, let's set up our InDesign document first. Okay, now I'm in InDesign, I'm going to set it up like this. Somebody before raised a great question about why I start on page two, and that is just because I'm only making two pages for this demonstration. For you guys, your page should start on number one, and you should have the pages on however many pages your magazine is going to be, right? Um, okay, I'm going to have the margins on 625, and I'm going to have just a standard 1.25 or 0.125 inch bleed. Go ahead and create that. Okay, so once we have our InDesign file set up, we can actually go back to Illustrator and just copy everything over. All right, so in Illustrator, we're going to select everything here, control copy, go into our already set up document in InDesign, and then we're going to paste. So if it comes in with these little dashed lines, that means we did it correctly, which means that all of these little dots are just singular vector shapes, and all of this is in a group. Now we don't really want it in a group, so we're gonna go ahead and ungroup it. So right click, ungroup, and with everything still selected, we're going to object, we're going to path, and we're going to make this into a compound path. Okay, so now that we have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and just size this so that it's something that I think will fit on the page relative to the design that I actually want to put on here. Now, the last couple steps are fairly simple. All you have to do is drag in your image. So just simply drag and drop your image into this new frame. I'm going to be fitting this frame proportionally. So that's looking pretty good. And then just add in your text. And just like that, you have a pretty wonderful design already on your page. Now, if you guys want to spice this up, you can give this a little bit of effect. I like to give it a nice gradient feather and just feather out the bottom here to make it look like it's incorporated into the page. Just have the head fade out a little bit. You can also do it up here. Whatever you guys think is good. But the one trick that I do want to let you guys know about is that this technique with the halftone, it works best with darker images. So make sure your image is dark enough so that you can see all the circles. Otherwise, it won't show up that well. All of these will be up on our website, so check that out. There'll be a step-by-step -step guide, uh, as well as all the images that I used in this tutorial will also be on there. So check that out if you guys want. And with that said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.